Often in life, we're faced with the tasks that we need to divide up something between a certain number of parties. And we're always interested in how can we do so fairly. We're going to start off with kind of the simple version of that question is how do two parties fairly divide something in half. And this brings up the idea for this next chapter of fair division. As we work with fair division in this chapter, there's a couple assumptions that we're going to hold true with this fair division process. The first assumption is that the parties are non-cooperative. In other words, everybody who wants to divide up the stuff doesn't really want to work together. They just want a neutral uh, mathematical method to split it up fairly between all parties so that everybody's happy with the results. Also, an assumption we're going to place is that parties do not know the value others place on the stuff demanded. Maybe we're trying to split up a pizza, and I don't like the half that's Hawaiian. Well, nobody knows that I don't like the half that's Hawaiian. That's my private information as we decide on how to split up the pizza. Another thing that's important is each of the parties involved will act in their own best interest. This is not the situation where there's one piece of pie left and mom suddenly declares that she doesn't like pie. That's not actually true. She's thinking in the best interest of her, of her kid, her spouse, or whatever. So parties in this case are always going to act in their own best interest, trying to get the most for themselves. In fact, more than your fair share would be ideal. And whenever possible, we want to assume that no outside arbitrator should be needed. These parties are going to work out the situation amongst themselves as they attempt to accomplish at least their own fair share. Now, a best way to say a fair share is when we've got some number of parties, we'll call it n parties, or people involved, are going to divide something equally, each party should receive one over n of the stuff, at least in that person's opinion. So if there's five parties, every person should get one fifth of the stuff. If there's three parties, everybody should get one third of the stuff in each person's individual opinion. So for example, with that, if I have a $12 pizza that is half pepperoni, and half veggie, and four people will divide the pizza. What is a fair share?
at least in terms of talking about the value of the pizza, we should get 1 fourth of the $12 pizza for each person, which means every person should get $3 worth of pizza. to get their fair share. Now the question becomes, is $3 worth of pizza mean one fourth of the pizza, or do you place different values on different parts of the pizza? For example, Steve likes pepperoni twice as much as veggie pizza, which means we could think about Steve's love for the veggie pizza to be maybe just x. However much value he places on those, those veggie slices is x. And then the value he places on a pepperoni slice would be double that, 2x. Typically, a pizza has eight slices to it. So we'll say the veggie has four slices, because we said it was half veggie. And the pepperoni has four slices, because it's half pepperoni, which means the value that Steve is placing on the four slices of veggie is 4x. And the value he's placing on the four slices of pepperoni is 2x times 4, or 8x, which means we've got a total value of 12x for the total pizza. And the total pizza cost $12. So x is equal to $1. So a slice of veggie x is going to be $1. And a slice of pepperoni, double that, is going to be $2. And we know that a fair share of this pizza we said the pizza had a fair share value in part A of $3. So Steve wants to get $3 worth of pizza. He could get one slice of veggie, which he would value as $1, and one slice of pepperoni, which he would value at $2 which gives us a total of $3 in pizza. Steve might instead decide he wants more pizza. So even though he values the veggie less, he could take three slices of veggie pizza. At a dollar each, he'll put those three veggie slices at a total value of $3, which is his fair share. Or Maybe Steve wants partial slices. Maybe he wants all pepperoni. So he's going to do one and a half slices of pepperoni. Because the one slice of pizza is two, the half a slice is one. So that's $3 worth of pepperoni pizza. And so you see there's many different ways we can slice a fair share for Steve, given that he likes the pepperoni twice as much as the veggie. Well, Steve's friend Kim has another problem. Kim is a vegetarian. which means the value Kim places on the veggie pizza, maybe we'll say some x for the veggie pizza, but the pepperoni pizza has absolutely no value to Kim. Kim doesn't want to eat the pepperoni. And again, we'll assume that if there are four slices of veggie and four slices of pepperoni, Kim places the veggie pizza at 4x, pepperoni 4 times 0 is 0, which means we've got a total of 4x is equal to that $12 pizza. Well, if we divide by 4, we see every x, every slice of veggie pizza, is worth $3. And so if $3 is a fair share, Kim's value of one veggie slice 
will get her a fair share. At least in terms of the value of the pizza that Kim has purchased. Now, hopefully, Kim and her friends can talk amongst each other and say, maybe one slice of veggie is not very fair in terms of volume of pizza, since we've been focusing on price of pizza. Uh, so they might come up with a different rating system. But this kind of gives you the idea of what a fair share is and how we can cut it. Now, the original question we started with, though, was how do two parties divide up something fairly? One common way used for two parties to divide up something is using what is called the divider chooser method. This is probably the most classic example. A lot of people are familiar with the divider chooser method to split between two people. The divider cuts the item in halves, and the chooser picks which piece she or he wants, and then the divider gets the remaining piece. The idea here is there's only one slice of cake left, and I have two kids that want it. I have one kid cut it in half. The other one's going to pick first, because the one who cuts it in half will make sure that they don't get a tiny piece. So they will cut it as perfectly as possible so that they can get the most cake or pie or whatever we're dividing up. So for example, uh, let's have Dustin and Quinn. who have an apple pie and a chocolate cake. And they both like apple and chocolate at different levels. So they're going to place value on both. So let's make a little table that shows the value that they're placing. We've got Dustin and Quinn. And they're trying to divide up an apple pie and a chocolate cake. And let's say Dustin thinks that apple pie is worth $6 and that chocolate cake is worth $4. Quinn thinks the apple pie is worth $4 and the chocolate cake is worth $10. And so they're going to divide up the apple pie and chocolate cake in a fair way using the divider chooser method. Now, this is interesting because they put different total values and different individual values and proportions on the pie and the cake. But watch what happens if Quinn is the divider. Quinn puts a total value of 10 plus 4, 10 plus 4 is $14 is Quinn's total value of both. So his fair share would be half of that, $7. So Quinn is going to divide up the apple pie and chocolate cake into two parts, where one part is worth $7 and the other part is worth $7 as defined by Quinn. Because remember, our assumption is he has no idea what Dustin is thinking in terms of value. He might say, OK, $7. What if I took 7 tenths of the chocolate cake in one pile? Because the chocolate cake is $10, and 7 tenths of 10 makes it $7. And in the other pile, we do the remaining 3 tenths of the chocolate cake with the entire apple pie. Notice 3 tenths of the chocolate cake would be worth 
and the apple pie would be worth $4, and 3 plus 4 is 7. So Quinn has made two piles worth $7. Well, in that case, Dustin's going to look at the two piles, but Dustin puts different values on them. Dustin says, OK, 7 tenths of the chocolate cake. The chocolate cake, Dustin only values at $4. So that would be 28 over 10. Dustin thinks the chocolate cake is only worth $2.80. Or Dustin could take 3 tenths of the chocolate cake, which is $4, and the entire apple pie, which Dustin values at $6. That's going to be 12 tenths, or 1 plus 2, or 1.2, plus 6 is 720, is the value of the second option. Well, Dustin says, gee, that sounds better. So Dustin's going to take 3 tenths of the chocolate cake with the entire apple pie to Dustin. And meanwhile, Quinn gets the other piece. Quinn gets 7 tenths of the chocolate cake, which in Quinn's mind is perfectly a fair share, because that's how Quinn divided it. And now everybody's happy, because Quinn got a fair share, Dustin got more than what he viewed as a fair share, and everybody is content with this situation. This is just one possible division of the apple pie and the chocolate cake that Quinn and Dustin could have agreed on. They might have just split them in half and said half the apple, half the chocolate, and that would have worked too or they could have split them in any number of other ways. What's important is when Quinn the divider divides them up, they are worth $7 in each pile. Then Dustin will pick the one that's most advantageous to Dustin, and Quinn is content because he still gets a fair share according to his own validation. All right, it's your turn to practice some of these fair share division problems, especially with the divider chooser method. And then in our next video, we'll take a look at what we can do when there's more than two people trying to divide something up, because divider chooser does not work quite as well when there's more than two people.